guys. In our last video, we sprayed, well, we, we taped this all up, I think, before, and then we sprayed a very thin layer of white lacquer on here uh, to, to act as a base for our airbrushing. So if you haven't been following the series, this guitar is getting a custom airbrush job. It's uh, a gift from one of my viewers to someone else who I believe just had a daughter. So it's, it's getting a, a pretty nice airbrush job relevant to that making sure all my tape is still stuck down here. Anyway, this lacquer has had about a week now to really dry and harden. So I'm going to go over it quickly with a red scotch, a red scotch bright pad, very lightly, just enough to scuff it up for, uh, to make sure that it's nice and smooth, that there aren't any imperfections in it, and to get it ready for the next layer of lacquer. Now, lacquer melts into itself, so this isn't as critical as it would be with, for example, a polyurethane or an enamel or something like that. I just like to take that extra step uh, as a way of being cautious and making sure that everything's ready to go. So this is what I'm gonna do next. Then I'm going to mask this thing up and get it ready for the airbrushing. So come watch me do that. What you saw me do there was obviously tape this entire thing off, the whole face, and then rub some willow charcoal on the back of my reference photo. So I printed off the reference picture. I, I had a couple copies here. I printed it off at the appropriate size. And then I rubbed willow charcoal on the back of it because willow charcoal is very soft, which makes it easy to transfer. I got it set in place, I taped it on one edge where I could flip it back and forth if I needed to, but I knew that it would stay in the same place. And then I just went over with the pencil and traced it, basically treating it like carbon paper. And what I've done is I've transferred all of the important elements on here, the ones that would be perhaps difficult to, uh, to just kind of do, if that makes sense. And now I'm gonna go in and cut out the ones that I need for airbrushing. So it's kind of difficult sometimes to tell which ones you need. I mean, it, it also depends on who you are. For example, I drew in these lines in the cheek here. Right, you see those? I drew those in, but I'm not gonna cut them out because from where they begin at the corner of the mouth, I'm confident that I'll be able to put them in freehand. If you're not very confident going freehand, you may need to cut out a little bit more stuff just to make sure that you've got all your reference points in the right place. Now, I'm going to use a brand new razor blade and uh, this is one of the square ones because I'm comfortable with them. If you prefer, there's no reason not to... Did I just open this door for nothing? Do I have that here? Ah, here we go. If you prefer, a lot of people prefer to use one of these, a hobby knife, right? You may find that easier. Probably most people do. I'm very accustomed to these, so this is what I'm going to be using. Make sure you're using a new one, okay? The reason we do that, you don't want to gouge into your project and you're thinking, oh, a new one's sharper, isn't it more likely to gouge? No. Uh, when you use a brand new razor blade, you barely have to push. It slices through the paper very nicely. If you've got a slightly duller one, what happens is you have to push down more and you tend to cut into your project. So don't be that guy who ruins a $500 project trying to save 25 cents on razor blades. That does not make sense, all right? Use a brand new razor blade. Use very little pressure. If you have to go over a line tw twice to cut it, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you'll cut through the paper, but you won't quite separate the glue that's holding it onto the guitar. Just gently drag the blade over it again. That's not a problem. So I'm gonna go in now and cut the lines that I need. So. 
I'm of course going to cut the outlines of the faces and sometimes you'll go to pick one of these pieces out after and you'll realize that you didn't quite cut far enough into it. I'm telling you that's that's not a problem. It's better to have that issue as opposed to going in and peeling everything off at the end and realizing that you've got a nice little imprint of the image carved right into the surface of what you're painting. Nobody likes that. I did it a couple times right at the beginning when I was painting my own stuff for practice a few years ago and uh, well it doesn't look good I'll tell you that. Hey guys if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find and subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also a big shout out to Sovereign King who does the vast majority of the music for my channel way better on guitar than I am and to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods I'll put the link in the description the man is a great guitar tech and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed yourselves see you next time Thank you.